Bitcoin is not the best payment method. It's probably the worst payment method. But Bitcoin is, 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 is maybe the worst payment method, but it's available always and everywhere. You don't have to ask anyone's permissions. You can just start hacking away. That's a very nice feature. Bitcoin represents something bigger than just speculation for, for making money. You learn by doing, and I've done a lot of uh, bad investments, so now I know uh, nowadays to be more careful. It's, it's hard to explain to people who don't know what the blockchain is. Um, I mean, a lot of people don't even know what Bitcoin is. So. This is going to change everything. This is a total, complete game changer. I'm Martin Sackerson, I'm the CEO for StrawPay. We had a, a lunch meeting every every week for like a couple of years discussing Bitcoin, what happened. We went to some conferences, looked at different ideas, tried to, to, to figure out something to to do. This we did while, while we're having our, our old regular jobs. I'm Christian, I'm, I'm actually a quantum physicist, a scientist from the beginning. When I found out about Bitcoin, it was actually a, accident or I mean it was a coincident. I was uh, amazed that uh, there is a financial system that's not owned by any bank or government. So I just quit my job and start doing something. I didn't know what. My name is Linus Dunkers. Uh, I have been working with uh, Bitcoin in different ways for about two years now. First time I invested personally in, in, in Bitcoin was actually after the crash. So after the Mt. Gox system crashed, uh, or they were robbed of a lot of their, their Bitcoins, uh, there was actually another site that what was established where you could buy and sell Bitcoins or exchange Bitcoins from within Mt. Gox and on the outside world. So there was like a ratio between the Mt. Gox coins and the real coins, so to speak. From there on I, I started uh, investing in, in bitcoins and sometimes speculating in, in other altcoins. About one year ago I, I quit my job. Uh, since that time I have been working full time uh, only with bitcoin related uh, technologies or mining and trading and so so forth. I'm Fred Schell, I am the co-founder and CEO of Cephalo, a Bitcoin company based out of Sweden. That was April 2013 when the price bubble uh, hit to 266. Of course it wasn't a bubble, it was just growth of Bitcoin. And then the price went down and, and I obviously noticed that I missed something. So that's when I bought my first Bitcoins. And, and from that quickly other cryptocurrencies you know, in Sweden it's even interesting because it, unlike most European countries, we actually can get registered with the financial inspection. So on that basis, there is not really an argument for any financial institution to refuse our business, uh, especially with the level of complex, uh, uncompliance that we're doing on our backend, which is uh, a more extensive likely than some of the banks that we've been talking to. My name is Suzanne Trukowski Tempelhoff. I'm the founder and CEO of BitNation. I started BitNation in July 2014. That was after I had been thinking about it and writing about it for about a decade. Before that, I was a military contractor actually, so I spent a lot of time in various war zones and a lot of the work I did was assessing governments. Um, Basically, doing, you know, measuring people's perception on governance, etc. So, I assisted in the process of governments being built and government being overthrown. You know, when I started, it's funny, when I started, a lot of people told me, like, oh, but aren't you afraid of governments? You know, how are they going to react to it and this and that? Actually, uh, I mean, curiously, most people I know who works for the government have come forward telling me, like, oh, that's actually a brilliant idea, like, how can we incorporate it? My name is Sergei Kotler, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of the Triple. In the beginning, it was just like, oh, you know, I want to do uh, a little Bitcoin project to, to see what it's like, and, uh, you know, it's uh, you get a much clearer perspective from actually being, being in there. And we looked at a bunch of things and gift cards and uh, things like that, and eventually it just happened uh, that we have some connections in the mobile industry. This far has been mostly targeting the, the existing Bitcoin users. Now we're thinking just Bitcoin users uh, is not really enough and we're 
thinking of ways of, of expanding this to reach a, a broader audience than just uh, the Bitcoin believers. It's always hard to, 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 to find money to, to, fund, to fund your company. Most venture capital stuff and business angels, they don't know what Bitcoin is. And I think it's kind of, or if they know they are sort of just used for, for, for drugs and crime. It was basically no problems at all at that time. You know, I had bank accounts and, and um, did my business. And uh, I think my, my first actual problem was my first fraud. I would say I've been fairly unlucky in my my uh, investments. <laughs> I've invested maybe in the 10 different companies that all uh, turned out to be either scams, uh, they went bankrupt or, or simply uh, the coin is not worth anything more. The banking relationships are really hard to obtain. Um, so we were lucky with Handelsbanken has been banking us since 2013. But expanding beyond Handelsbank has been proven to be very difficult. <laughs> it's, it's a startup, you know. Uh, if it wasn't, if it was straightforward, it wouldn't be fun, right? Deep down, we still don't really know what Bitcoin is going to be used for and for what. And in the Western world, Bitcoin is, uh, is in a lot of ways uh, a nice to have. Someone uh, illegally transferred money from a bank account to my bank account. And from that day, uh, things changed. I thought I would take it to the next level, making a company. I registered my, my, uh, my company, BTC Sweden. Uh, I, I filed for the right to, to buy and sell uh, Bitcoin as a company from Finansinspektionen. So I got the permission, uh, or at least I'm registered. Uh, to do so. But then there was the problem of Swedish banks. We were part of the Techstars Accelerator, Barclays Accelerator in the UK, so we've had the discussions with the highest level within, within the banking community, so we understand what their reservations are. Um, and unfortunately for most other countries in Europe, but yeah, again, even in Sweden where we are registered with the financial inspection, um, it seems to be based on the fact there's no clear guidance from the regulators uh, and they keep it unregulated, which is preventing those banks to make that step. The only ones who have given me problems actually are people who used to work on my team. Like some people try to sabotage um, BitNation, they uh, attack the server, they close down social media channels, channels they slandered me uh, in the media and BitNation as well. The number one question of Bitcoin is, is uh, that the people need to ask themselves is when someone says Bitcoin is a great tool to buy things online, it makes it cheaper and faster, better to buy things online. And you go, yeah, that's great. So how do I get some Bitcoin? Well, you buy it online, <laughs> right? And how do you do that? Well, you use existing infrastructure, which is why it's ironic that a lot of Bitcoin companies' main problem is, is that banks are not going to be are not very cooperative. I started to learn how, how banks are working. And in the beginning it was quite okay. Um, but then it became more and more... The banks became more and more hostile, you can say. When they realized what actually Bitcoin was. In the beginning I just said, no, it's like a TV game currency. You, you can buy games in a game. Like, you know, like, ah, that sounds like fun and not dangerous. But then it realized, oh, this is a global financial monetary transmission system. Like, what, what does that mean for us? Then, then it start making more resistance. As many of us uh, entrepreneurs or, or early adopters in, in Bitcoin have realized is that the banks is, is not they are very hostile against everything that has to do with Bitcoin. Somewhere there, my, my ideas of, uh, of running it as a company instead of doing private trading, it stopped because th there was no possibility uh, of, of, uh, of doing that. If you're talking to the larger banks on the highest level, it's, it's definitely the risk that they see in um, um, getting fined disproportionately for banking Bitcoin businesses or cryptocurrency businesses. So, and, and it goes down all the way to 
um, from from uh, the, the pseudonymity of the, the cryptocurrency to to you know what about the mining fee that you're paying uh, miners that are in China and, and what about that and it's really hard to, to have those arguments because okay yeah that's that's the way it is this is how digital currency works it's a digital form of cash then it took um, a year because before the actually government started exploring Bitcoin and they started to uh, pose um, legal requirements on on uh, on my company and uh, and basically that that's from from that day it, that's what become more and more of the business unfortunately i mean i started bitcoin as a revolution like yay finally a finance system that we own and not the government or uh, banks this, this is our finance system but the last year i've been only working with complying with banks complying with governments complying with the legal structure um, which is a lot of work and it's really custom so from starting from nothing starting from nothing uh, that's impossible to do today at least if you work with the exchange business with bitcoin it's it's as troublesome as start any other financial company so so the benefit of being a, a uh, using Bitcoin as an exchange is, is gone today, but you can still have it as a user. A lot of use cases that have not been possible before because there was nothing, now there is something. That's what I think the strength is uh, of Bitcoin, that it's a, it's a fallback for when, when all, the, all other options have been exhausted. And when it comes to, to business models for startups, We've seen that the, the consumer payments thing is sort of been tried and, and didn't really pan out <laughs> uh, the way that the people thought with uh, you know merchant adoption and consumer adoption. Currently, the blockchain can handle like seven transactions a second. That's about it. You you can start changing the block size and stuff, but it's you won't. You might get high. Well, you will get. Get hired, but you need to get every, every, everything. You need to get lots of people to to, to um, cooperate. I think the blockchain startups right now um, we are ahead of our time. What I do have and that I appreciate very much is uh, all the contacts I have received from trading and mining uh, through Skype and email and, and, and local bitcoins and so on. Stay connected with the, the community. The, the, the community is really strong. So get get uh, get support of the community and, and be open. We're creating history, but which is fantastic, exciting, and so forth. But it's also challenging because it's hard to explain to people who don't know what the blockchain is. Um, I mean. A lot of people don't even know what Bitcoin is, so taking it a step further can be challenging. Many of them I, I work very closely with nowadays, and they are doing very interesting projects, both within mining uh, pools and, and exchanges and so on. I've noticed that the, the, the Bitcoin community is not greedy, it's very helpful, and if they see something that is greedy, that might be not so welcome. So that was sort of like the first wave, and the second wave was the remittance wave, which we're now seeing is not paying, panning out. And uh, the question is, what, what are the next uh, next waves going to be? We will, of course, get the 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 the, the number of transactions that the blockchain can handle will increase, but not fast enough. A lot of these technologies have not been really tested in practice yet huh? so there's going to be a lot of trial and error for a long time to come. We are like a team on Skype that are communicating often about what we can do and how we can do uh, new services, offer new services. And that's just the perspective that Bitcoin actually came from financial crisis 2008 where greed was huge, at least in the American bank's financial system. It goes back to, to this that it's not, it's not practical to have, to, to have a record of all small 
transactions in the blockchain. We're gonna suffer a lot from people saying like, oh, well, this doesn't work perfectly, or there's like a kink in this, or a problem with that, which there is in any emerging technology. So we just have to expect that. Huh? The next 10 years will be challenging. So it, it's, it has a history of generosity. So stay open and generous, then you will succeed. Until that is in place, uh, some of these ideas, uh, I, I can't go much deeper into it, but, uh, but more than, than saying that I, I think uh, half a year from now, uh, my, I, my goal is uh, to have a lot more activities running, a lot more than just uh, mining, but uh, we'll see, we'll see.